So this battery pack had died before I had to run out of town, and I didn't get it on video, but I didn't have any 9 amp hour uh, lead acid batteries. I had 7.5 amp hour. So I rebuilt the cell, which of course the battery backup didn't like, but it was enough to get it through the weekend. It will still power the unit just poorly and won't have much runtime. Um, but I didn't shoot any video of it. I figured I'd talk about this. Some of these RBCs are really hard to pull apart, these, these uh, battery packs for APC battery backups. So I take my heat gun and I set it to 100C and I'll go over the pack and I'll heat the pack up to get the adhesive to heat up. You could also use a hair dryer and I'll slowly lift. Um, that's a new change. This used to not be an issue. Um, I used to just peel and you can see now, since these newer packs have much stronger adhesive, it ends up actually ripping the label. I think they've gotten used to people just rebuilding these over and over again because they do charge a ridiculous fee for these. Um, I've got some brand new batteries to put in this, so I'm going to grab those real quick and we'll start peeling this and rebuild it. Oh my goodness. It's got some weight to it. Let me cut away from myself. There we go. Dear God. All right. Look at that beautiful box. We have four wonderful 9 amp hour 12 volt batteries in here. These are the name brand batteries that you end up seeing inside the packs when you first get them. They do seem to last longer than some of the Chinese ones on the Amazon. Um, so I've been trying to stick with this name brand when I rebuild the packs whenever possible. And uh, it costs a little more, but it's still cheaper than buying an RBC. Okay, here's a 7.5 amp hour batteries I'd previously taken apart, and I think the adhesive is still weak, and it is. So once you heat it up and pull it off once, it doesn't stay on as well, thankfully. I take this and I just stick it to the table over on the side. Out of the way. Ooh, it smells so bad. Whatever adhesive they switch to is a stinky adhesive. It smells. Okay, there's the next one. Just give a good peel here on both sides. Just going to roll this up. There we go. Stick that stinky adhesive on the side there. Okay, and there's the two batteries. Now we've got, as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, these were 12 volt, 7.2 amp hour. I actually have these for one of the kids' power wheels. Uh, so they were not the right batteries, but they're what I had on hand when I was going out of town. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a battery backup. I'm not going to be out of town and have my systems go offline. And then uh, take that one off. And then this. There'll be one lead, they're connected in series, so one lead kind of winds through this guy and he kind of daisy chains through. That's not something we care about though. Let's pop that guy off. There we go. All right, so these two batteries are still good, but they're 7.2 uh, amp hour. They're not 9 amp hour, which is what we actually need for this pack. All right, come back over here. Here's a beautiful 9 amp hour ready to go. So we're going to start by um, plugging in the negative on this side. And then this one's going to snake through, like so. And that's going to go to the positive. Ooh, go back in there. Let's rotate this around here. It's going to go positive on this side. There we go. And then that's going to go like that. And so then the other two will be up here. If I can get that. There we go. All right. And the other battery going to lay on top. We're going to take a little post protector off because we don't need that. We'll save it though for the other batteries. And we're going to feed that negative on first. Come on. These are obviously very tight blade terminals. Come on. Those are bent down. We're going to have to bend those a little bit. This does happen every once in a while. You have to, a little bit of a bend on your terminals. That's okay. It's quite all right. That's much better. There we go. All right, so that's the pack ready to be taped. And so what I like to do is kind of get it lined up as much as I can. Sometimes the wire wants to fight with you. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's good. And then I'm gonna want the one that says this side in you need to check and see where the pins are. So there's no pins on that side, yeah? 
but you see there's pins on this side, so you want the green construction saying this side end facing the pins. Not that it matters, but it will for the person who's thoroughly confused. So you want to be insert that way in, because that's the connectors, right? Start at the middle, and then just tape down our batteries. There we go, get one side fully taped like this. We're going to flip the pack over, pop to the other side. And this is where I got the batteries from, obviously, this Amazon store, Security Depot, or whatever. A lot of alarm systems use the same batteries, so that's why. And then facing the opposite direction, obviously, will be the um, the battery neutral, which is where you have a you have a nothing slot that has no pins in it on this side. And that's for if you don't want to use the battery or it's in shipping. And that's it. That's literally it. You have assembled a APC battery pack. It does not have to look pretty. The battery system does not care. So you can see on this side, we've got the pins deep in there. Can I get the focus to show on lighting? Yep, there you go. So see on this side, you got pins. On the opposite side, you got a whole lot of nada. So when you pull this thing out of the, um, the battery backup, initially after shipping, you have to pull it in and flip it around 180, which is a cool design. I'm pretty sure PPC has a patent on this, but that's it. We've reassembled our battery pack for about half the cost, if not less, depending on how stingy you wanted to get on your battery tech. Uh, we're going to go put this in the battery backup, and then we're going to uh, force a check. I do want to check one thing first, actually, as I'm saying that. I want to see what the state of charge is on these. Um, I have a DC power supply. With lead acid, it's pretty easy. You just uh, straight up give it juice with a current limited power supply. I usually go with like um, half an amp. You could use a battery charger too, but it's going to be at 24 volt because they're in series. We're just going to check real quick. We are at 24.78, 24.8. So that's a pretty decent charge. Um, that should be enough for us to run a calibration test up on insertion. And the reason you want to do that is, is when you put the new batteries in, on the APC UPSs, at least I've been using the cheaper consumer ones, They'll see that there's battery, they'll see that there's voltage, and then they'll go into alarm after like an hour or two um, because they're like, well, this it's not calibrated basically. So when you put it in, you're going to press and hold the power button, and it's going to go boop, boop, boop. And when you hear the second beep, you can release. If you release on the first beep, it's going to drop the load and turn off, which is bad. You don't want to do that. So um, we're going to press and hold the power button. We're going to listen for two beeps, um, and then we're going to let it recalibrate, and we're going to let it sit there and charge. Let's uh, let's go to the server room to get this done. Okay, we're now in the home server room, and we're going to insert the battery pack into the unit. I'm just gonna take it like this, and then as we go, there we are. The right way around. Flip. Be 180. Oh, oh, that was the right way. Just the right way. It is polarity protected by design that way. All right. Oh, come on. That's a real beast to get while it's plugged in and active. Oh, son of a bee. There we go. All right. Let's finagle this thing back around. Okay. All right. So you see, it says battery fail. Now we're going to press and hold. Wait for beep beep. Okay, that made it see the battery. We should be seeing it come back now. Try pulling and reinserting that battery again. Let's see what we can do here. It's acting like it doesn't see the battery. Did I put the labels on wrong? Have I done something silly here? Did you all catch it? Put it in the comments if you can see what doofus thing I've done. This is usually really easy to do. What have I done here? Oh, huh. I did. I did put the label on wrong. That is the, uh, I didn't read 
this way. I told you to put it on there the right way, and I put the battery in backwards. I was wondering why it wasn't calibrating. Uh, Dooley. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, here. This one happens to be don't read your own stuff there. Yeah. Oh, yep, and the battery is already showing full now. Yeah, so don't do that. Don't put it in backwards. You're going to do it. It's okay. Ignore it. Especially when you're on camera. You're going to do it wrong. So you're going to do it for a second. You know. There we go. Okay, so battery's showing full now. Okay, now we need to recalibrate. So press and hold. One. One, two. There she goes. See that popped? Shows online. Now it's running on battery. This is the battery going down. And there it's done. Calibration cycle complete. That's it. So, short of me putting the battery in the wrong way and being very confused for a second, which I want to leave in so you can see what happens when you do that, because you're going to do that at some point. Um, that's all you have to do to get your battery backup back functional. So, maybe someday I'll use a proper rack mount battery. <laughs> for now, I've got these two little pieces of garbage behind the monitor.